and this part we're going to look at how we get to this final render. So we're going to jump into Maya. First thing we're going to do is create a camera. So create, camera, camera. And then in the here we're going to go panels, look through, selected. I'm going to click this little button here which turns on the resolution gate. So we can see, if I just move this across, the outline of what is going to be rendered. And then because we're looking through the camera we just move as normal and we can change our view. So we're looking through the camera here. I'm just going to put the candy cane roughly where I want it. In the attribute editor, first thing we're going to change on the camera is the focal length. So by default it's say 5, but it always helps if you try and change it um, and you get some more interesting results. So I'm going to drop this down to maybe 28 and then I'm just going to adjust the candy cane so it's sort of where I want it to be and the size I want it to be. And then that's my camera. So I don't want my camera to move now. So I'm just going to grab these and I'm going to right click and choose lock selected. That means that I can't accidentally move my camera. So a little trick there for you. The next step that we want to do is add a light into the scene. So I'm going to go to Arnold, Lights, Sky Dome Light. Sky Dome Light is how you would use a HDRI image. But actually for this render, I literally just added a Sky Dome Light and left it white. Um, so that's our light setup. Next is going to be the backdrop. So we're going to go to Create, Polygon Primitive, Cube. And then let's just go back to the perspective view for a second. And with the cube selected, right click and go to face mode. And we're going to delete those four faces. Select this and we're going to scale it up. And then we're going to scale it out quite far, maybe up a bit more. And then if we hit three, this will smooth it and we get a nice infinity backdrop um, it's black at the moment because the normals are facing the other way so we can go to mesh display reverse and we've now got the normals pointing towards our camera I'm going to right click assign new material click on Arnold go to AI standard surface and then we can choose any color that we want. So my render had this kind of like dusky pink color. So that's the color that I'm going to choose, but you can choose obviously any color that you want. So with the um, backdrop um, material, what you also want to do is find the specular tab and turn the roughness up to either something between 0.6 and 0.8. That's going to take the kind of specular off the backdrop. We just want the backdrop to be a matte colour really. We've done the camera, we've done the lighting and we've done the backdrop. So we're going to now just create some more candy canes for our composition. So I'm going to select the candy cane and choose Control D to duplicate and then I can move this across. And um, With the IPR view, if you don't have scene updates ticked then it won't um, add automatically render new objects in there so you need to make sure that's ticked so now we can sort of use the IPR view and we can also if that's too slow we can look through the camera just in the normal viewport um, so I'm going to try and create one that's sort of in the foreground of our render so I'm going to do that by moving it but also I'm going to scale it and also rotate it a little bit and kind of try and recreate what I've done in the final render. So I've spent some time, duplicated my candy canes around, varied the size and I've also, I'll just quickly show you, varied the distance um, from the camera this way um, so that we can add some depth of field into there. So we're going to select the camera and scroll down to the bottom and you'll see an Arnold section toggle that and then you've got enable depth of field so if you tick that don't worry nothing will happen yet we need to set the focus distance in the aperture size first so 
to find the focus distance, you want your object that you want to be in focus. Um, we can find the distance of this from the camera. If you go to display, heads up display, and turn on object details, you'll get this little heads up display here, and it has a distance from camera value. So if we select the kind of cane that we want in focus, it tells us that the distance from camera for mine is 2.566. So you want to note down your value and then we're going to go back to the camera and we're going to type that value into the focus distance. Again, nothing still happened. We need to add something to the aperture size. Aperture size depends on your scene size. So you can start by just putting in a value. So let's try 0.1 and my IPR is going to update and we can see that we have some um, blurry objects. Um, this doesn't look particularly in focus so I think I might tone down the aperture size as well. Don't worry about the noise, we will be able to fix that in a moment. So I think in my render uh, that I did previously, I settled on 0.025. This value will obviously depend on your scene scale. So play around with it till you get something that you like. So now that we've added depth of field, we've just got our render settings. When you introduce depth of field, you're gonna introduce noise. So we need to go into our render settings and go to the Arnold Renderer tab. So we are going to up the AA. We can try something like five or six um, and see how we get on. And then we can just bump up the diffuse and specular as well. Um, and then we aren't going to get a true representation of what those um, settings are doing if we're using IPR because IPR will only take it so far. So now is the point where you might want to turn the IPR off actually just do a full render. So we can see that we've got some variation in the depth of field now. It's still a little bit noisy on this candy cane that's really blurred out in the foreground. So um, I'm just going to up the samples again and I think these were the final samples that I used for the actual render so they should be okay. It will vary depending on your scene. Um, and then the last thing that we need to do is if we go to the common tab, we can change the image size preset to our final resolution. So mine was HD 1080. And then what I'm gonna do is render once more and then we can save the image out. Um, this is a beginner tutorial, so we're not gonna batch render this. And as it's just a single frame, it's okay if we render it within the viewport and then we just save out the, the, save out the image. So I'm gonna go to File, Save Image. I'm not gonna bother with an EXR um, because I'm not gonna do any post-processing. I'm just gonna take it straight out of Maya. So I'm gonna go to Save Image and then um, we can choose a, a file name so I'll call this candy game version 3 and then put your file extension that you want so jpeg tiff png I'm just going to go for a, a jpeg and click save and that has now saved out your image and you are ready to share it on your social media or to post it wherever you want to so if you enjoyed this tutorial and um, please do think about subscribing um, I'm really trying to grow my channel and I would really appreciate it 